parables complementary. The first tell us that we should not be afraid of our future as Christians. And the second tell us that we should be afraid, but not of the future, but of separating ourselves from Christ. The seed works on its own. He works by himself according to the strength that has within. So does the word of God. I always remember the anecdote of St. John Paul II when he was a young man. A young man in a Poland, a Warsaw occupied by the Nazis, where young Polish were joining the resistance. The Polish resistance was the most numerous, even if there was not many films made of the resistance against the Nazis in the countries, it was the more numerous at the one that lost most lives. And then Karol Wojtyła wanted to liberate his homeland. A lay spiritual director who was called the mystical traitor because he was a deeply religious man told him a phrase that changed his life and changed the history of the church. He told him, he will destroy himself. You dedicate yourself to the good. And Moitiwa entered the seminary clandestinely, but he entered the seminary. Dedicate yourself to the good, because evil destroys himself. Good has his strength. He has his power. Men cannot live in ruins. The ruins may be romantic. Well, very nice. Even beautiful. Well, the ruins of a great castle and the ruins of the monastery. Well, but a ruin is a ruin. Men cannot live in a ruin. And what they are doing now is sowing the world with ruins, with human ruins. It is enough to look at the movies. There is not a stable family relation proposed as a model in practical any film. They are all fragile, temporarily. Intense relationships, yes, intense from the sexual point of view, intense and flirting. The kind of society they are building is a ruin. And men cannot live in a ruin because it's not happy, because there is no place for someone to live in there. That is not place, and therefore, men long for something else. The power of the word, the power of the truth, the power of the love, the power of the Lord will sooner or later make men long to desire another kind of life, another kind of relationship, another kind of stability. We have to believe in this. We have to believe in the strength of the word, in the strength of Jesus' message. The only Jesus truly teaches us how to be men, and the rest is publicity, and publicity because it deceives. It is true, it deceives, but sooner or later you realize that the product that has been sold to you is simply a part of liquid that is good for nothing. The second parable, on the other hand, which complements the first, tells us that we not need to be afraid to be the small seed, and the Lord gives the example of the master seed. We don't have to be afraid. Why don't we have to be afraid? Not only because of what the first parable tells us, because the force of the law of love will inevitably overcome the force of the law of hate and selfishness. We do not have to be afraid because our mission, our object, is not to be majority. Not that we despite being the majority, but it's not our object. The goal of my life, of my personal life, I am a priest. The goal of my personal life is to love God. And really, what hurts me, and it hurts me a lot, is not to love Him enough. 
how little I loved him, compared to what he deserves to be loved. The goal of our life cannot be numbers, it cannot be success, and I wish that the whole world were Catholic and in love with God, but not at any price. I wish that we Catholics were not 1 billion, 300 million, but 10 billion, but not at any price. Because the goal of my life is not the number at any price, but the God may be known and loved. This is the goal of my life. So, if to be a political correct, to receive applause of the new dictators, of the new traitor who used the media as Nero, used the lions, only their bites are mortal. Honor the structure until the time comes when it's not enough, also their bites attack the body. Well, in order to be politically correct and receive the applause of the world, I have to renounce my principles, I have to renounce Christ. I have to betray Christ. I will not do it. With the grace of God, I will not do it. We have to renounce to the defend of life. In order to receive the applause of the media and to be told that we are in the line with what the new order of the world wants, well, no. We cannot do it. We cannot because Christ comes first. The minorities, what they really have to worry about is not being a minority. If it is a minority, then it is a minority. It must be the master seed. It is the lead. What the minority has to worry about is to be authentic minority, to be faithful. Yes, it's a pinch in the dough. And it changed the dough. Salt is a pinch in the food. And it changed the taste. The minority, what he has to do is to be faithful to himself, in this case, to be faithful to Christ. We are the mustard seed, hurts it, persecuted, misunderstood, but we have to be like this for 2,000 years. How many inferior, terrible empires have fallen? How many priest haters have died? How many? It seemed that they were going to destroy the church forever. But they have finished before us. Voltaire, the famous philosopher, advisor to the king, who lived in the palace, spoke of the people and lived like a king. Voltaire said, I will not say it in French because I pronounce it very badly, crush the veil. And the veil was the church. Crush the veil. Voltaire died, and he died crying out for a priest, and his friends, those of the Enlightenment, did not bring him one, because he will be a discredit to the cause of the great Voltaire. The anti-clerical Voltaire had asked for a priest, and people knew it. So, let us have confidence. Let us have confidence in the power of the Word of God, in the power of the law of love, in the strength of the message of Jesus Christ, in the grace of God, and in the power of God. Let us not be afraid, thinking what will happen to us because our personal life, our family life, as a church, is in the hands of the Lord. Let us be concerned instead, personally and collectively, to be faithful to Christ. I don't have to do anything else. Everything is in God's hand. Everything, my life, the life of my family, the life of the Franciscans of Mary, the life of the church, everything is in God's hands. And these are like children's playing, sources of vanity who believe that they can change the world with a few pieces of paper with a dollar or euro on them, and that they represent many millions. And if a virus comes alone and changes our life, do not be afraid, little flock. Jesus tells us, do not be afraid. He, Christ, has conquered the world. 
His or her Soviet 